Welcome to the deep dive, everyone. You know, today we're going somewhere uh, different. We're diving into Ezekiel's testimony. Five wealthy souls he saw in hell. Mm. It, well, it's not exactly uh, it's not exactly light reading, you know, <laughs> yeah. more like a, a diary entry from the afterlife. Right. Ezekiel, he describes this vision and in it are five people. And these people, they were all incredibly successful in life. Mm -hmm. But now they're in torment, apparently. You know, what I find fascinating is how Ezekiel, he doesn't just focus on like, you know, the bad stuff, the sins. Mm -hmm. He really zeroes in on the good they didn't do, like the missed opportunities. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It makes you think, are we are we accountable not just for, for the harm we cause, but also for the good we just don't don't bother with? It's deep, right? It goes beyond just one religion or belief system. Right. It's a question for, for everyone. It makes you examine your own life, the choices you make. Yeah. So let's let's jump into it. First, soul Ezekiel meets. A billionaire. And not just any billionaire. Think, think like over the top luxury. Wow. Huge estates, private jets. But in this vision, Ezekiel sees him totally stripped of all that, totally empty and tormented by a hunger that nothing can satisfy. It's striking. The imagery Ezekiel uses, he, he talks about this billionaire reaching for gold, but it just crumbles like dust. It's like all that wealth, the thing he thought would make him happy, secure. Yeah. It becomes his prison, yeah. the source of eternal frustration. That image, the gold turning to dust, it's it's powerful. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think Ezekiel's getting at with that specific detail? Maybe he's highlighting just how fleeting material possessions are in the grand scheme of things, even mm. those huge fortunes. They're meaningless. You can't buy happiness. You can't buy peace. You can't buy redemption. Can't buy your way out of this, apparently. Apparently not. But it's not just that. Ezekiel, he describes the billionaire haunted by these faces, people he wronged, the families he destroyed, just to get more money, more profit. Makes you think maybe real wealth, true wealth, <laughs> is in the connections we build, <laughs> the love we share, the positive impact we have, mm. you know. It's a theme that seems to run through this whole vision. It's not just about the sins, but about the love and compassion we don't give, especially when we have the means to to help, to make things better. Yeah. So the next person Ezekiel describes is an entertainer. This guy, he's got incredible talent, a platform to influence millions, maybe even billions of people. It could have been a force for good. Instead, he chooses to glorify, well, a lifestyle of just excess. Indulgence. Yeah. Now he's trapped. He has to listen to all the regret from his fans. It's like this constant reminder of the damage he caused. A ripple effect, you know? It's like he's being held accountable not just for his choices, but for the choices of all those people he influenced. Yeah, it's heavy, right? Think about the responsibility that comes with fame, with that kind of influence. Especially in the afterlife, where you don't get a do-over, you can't make things right. No second chances. Which leads us to the next figure, the corrupt politician. Mm -hmm. Someone who used his power for his own gain, for greed. He put that above justice, and he hurt the very people he was supposed to be serving. The imagery here, it's really intense. Ezekiel sees him weighed down by chains, and each link is a bad decision, a bribe, a manipulated law. Wow. It's like the things that gave him power have become his punishment. Yeah. A constant reminder of the trust he broke. And that betrayal, that seems to be at the heart of his suffering. It's not just losing his position. It's realizing he blew his chance to make a real difference, to help the people who believed in him. It's almost like a fate worse than any physical punishment. To see the pain you've caused, the faces of the people you let down, that has to be a heavy burden to carry. It makes you think, right? Is any amount of power worth that? But let's move on to the next soul Ezekiel describes. This one's, well, she's pretty striking. A woman obsessed with beauty. People loved how she looked, but inside she was empty. Ezekiel says she's trapped in this hall of mirrors, having to confront her fading beauty and the emptiness inside. It's, heavy. it's like a metaphor, right? For how fleeting external validation is. The danger of chasing superficial stuff instead of real connection. Beauty fades, but a good heart lasts forever. Right. But in this vision, there's this feeling of despair, like she realizes too late that true beauty comes from within, from kindness and compassion, living a life with purpose. It's a good question. What happens when we put all our value on outward appearances? What's left when that fades? It's a sobering thought. Yeah. And lastly, we come to the philanthropist. This one is interesting because it's not about like pure evil acts, but the reasons behind good deeds. Right. Exactly. He wasn't a villain, not really. 
He gave a lot to charity. People praised him for it. He did all the right things, on the surface. But Ezekiel, he sees something else. Go on. He describes him surrounded by shadows, the ghosts of people he could have helped but didn't. He's realizing his giving was all about him. He wanted the recognition, the praise, not to help people. It's a reminder that our intentions, they matter. Even doing good things, if it's for the wrong reasons. It can backfire. It can leave you empty. Yeah. And full of regret. So we've met all five souls now, all successful in their own way, but all facing torment. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is that none of them are like pure evil. They're flawed, sure, but their flaws are human flaws. Yeah. The desire for wealth, power, fame, validation. They're cautionary tales reminding us that chasing worldly success without a moral compass, without thinking about the consequences, it can lead to a pretty dark place. It's like they each represent a different trap. You know, yeah. the trap of greed, the trap of fame, the trap of power, the trap of vanity, even even the trap of good intentions, but like gone wrong. But Ezekiel, he doesn't just show us these tormented souls, right? Mm -hmm. Right. He brings back a message, a plea to the living. I think a wake up call. It is a wake up call. It is. So what is it? What's what's the message? What does he want us to do? He says we need to seek God, live a life of meaning, of purpose, build, build treasures that last. OK, break that down a bit. Yeah. What does he mean by by treasures that last. Is he talking about donating to charities? Yeah. Building yeah. churches? No, no, I think I think it's deeper than that. Okay. Remember, all these souls, they had tons of material wealth in life, but it didn't do anything for them in the afterlife. Yeah. Ezekiel's suggesting that real wealth, it's in the stuff you can't touch. Love, compassion, kindness, the positive impact we have on each other. So it's not about having wealth, it's about what you do with it. Right. It's about about using what you've got to make a difference. Exactly. And it's not just money, it's time, it's your talent, your energy, anything you can offer to help others. It's like the false philanthropist. Yeah. He had all the money in the world, but he just wanted the recognition. He wanted the applause. Not to actually help anyone. Yeah. And that's that's the point Ezekiel's making. It's not enough to just do good. It's about why you're doing it. Yeah. Are you doing it for yourself? Or are you doing it out of genuine love, compassion? Because it seems like intention, it matters, even after you're gone. So. So how do we apply this to our own lives? How do we avoid ending up like like those souls? It starts with looking inward. What are your values? What really matters to you? Right. And are your actions matching those values? You have to be honest with yourself and make choices that reflect what you believe. And be aware of why you're doing things. Are yeah. you chasing validation or acting out of love? Exactly. It's so easy to get caught up in chasing wealth, fame, power. But Ezekiel, he's reminding us that those things... They don't last. So what's the alternative? What is a life of meaning, of purpose? What does that even look like? It's different for everyone. Some people, they find it in dedicating their lives to a cause. Others, it's about family, raising kids, or just making their community a little bit better. Little things add up. They do. It's about finding what clicks with you and yeah. using your own talents to be part of something bigger. Absolutely. And remembering that your actions, they have an impact, not just on you, but on others. We have to use our influence for good to create a better world. This has been, well, intense, to say the least. And it definitely makes me think about my own life, my choices. But there's one thing I'm still struggling with. Ezekiel's vision, it's so, so bleak. Is there any hope for those souls? Can they find redemption? even in the afterlife. That's that's a question people have been asking forever. It's yeah. a question of faith, of what you believe. So Ezekiel, he doesn't say one way or the other. He doesn't, but he does say it's never too late to change in this life. Got it. He wants us to, to seek God, turn away from things that are harmful, and choose a path of love, of service. So while what happens after we die is a mystery, we can choose a different path now. A path that aligns with what we believe in. Exactly. That's the power we have. We're not just along for the ride. We have choices. Yeah. And those choices, they shape not just our present, but also maybe our eternal future. Okay, I'm starting to get it. Ezekiel's vision, it's scary, sure, but it's also a motivator. To live a better life, a life with meaning. But there's still one thing I'm not clear on. He talks about seeking God. What does that even mean practically? Does it mean I have to follow a specific religion? That's the thing. He doesn't give a specific answer. He's inviting us to figure that out for ourselves. Hmm. Okay. It's not about finding the right answer from someone else. It's about looking inside yourself, figuring out what connects you to something bigger. 
So it's not about rituals or dogma. It's about about feeling something sacred, something bigger than yourself. Exactly. It could be through prayer or spending time in nature, helping others, mm. being creative. The key is to find what resonates with you, what feeds your soul, what makes you feel that sense of awe and wonder. That makes life feel real, right? Right. This reminds me of what you said about building treasures. Maybe seeking God is about building those treasures now. Yeah. Not waiting for some afterlife, but making choices that reflect our values, choices that make the world better. I think you're getting it. It's about yeah. realizing that we can create heaven not as some far off reward, but as something we build right here, right now. Wow, that's powerful. It's not about waiting. It's about doing. We're not hoping for a better afterlife. We're building it. And by doing that, Maybe the line between this life and the next, maybe it's not so clear. Maybe. Maybe the treasures we build here, the love, the connections, the impact, maybe those things go beyond time and space. Maybe they become part of something much bigger than us. It's a beautiful thought. It makes Ezekiel's testimony more than just a warning. It's an invitation to create something meaningful, something that lasts. Something that outlives you. And that's a legacy worth, well, worth working for. But I think we've given everyone a lot to think about. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. So as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I want to leave everyone with a question. Okay. What treasures are you building? The kind that crumble or the kind that last? Mm. Yeah, you know, we've, we've really gone deep on this, these stories and what Ezekiel's trying to tell us. And as we wrap up, I keep coming back to that idea, seeking God. You said it's been debated for centuries. Mm. What, what makes it so complex? Mm. Especially with what Ezekiel saw. Well, Ezekiel, he doesn't lay out a step-by-step -step plan, you know? Yeah. This is his personal experience, his vision. Right. It's not a rule book. He's saying, hey, think about what this search means to you. <laughs> so less about dogma, more about a, a personal journey. Yeah, connecting to something, something bigger than yourself, something that gives your life meaning. Right. Some people, they find that in religion, following those practices. Mm. Others, it's more personal, nature, mindfulness, just just helping others. So finding what works for you, what feels right, helps you live a better life. Exactly. And it's not a finish line you cross. It's a journey. Yeah. You keep searching, keep asking questions, keep growing. You know, I'm thinking about those souls Ezekiel saw, the billionaire, the philanthropist, mm. Mm. outwardly successful, but inside they were, they were lost. <laughs> Their success, it, it was built on ego, on greed, on wanting everyone to think they were great. Not on anything real. Right. <laughs> they were empty inside. So seeking God, is it about like filling that emptiness, finding meaning beyond money and accomplishments? Yeah. It's about purpose, connection, love, things that go beyond the material world. This has been, well, a lot to process. But I think the main takeaway for me is that being successful the way the world sees it isn't enough. No. We have to be aware of how we live, the choices we make, how we treat others. It's not about how much money you have or how many people follow you online. It's about something deeper. Yeah. It's the love we give, the kindness we show, how we make the world better. Those are the things that matter. Those are the real treasures, the things that last. As we wrap up our deep dive into Ezekiel's testimony, we want to leave you with a question. Okay. Not to answer right now, but to think about. Okay. What treasures are you building? the kind that fade away, or the kind that last forever. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We hope it's given you something to think about, something to hold on to, something to inspire you. Until next time, keep searching, keep growing, and keep building those treasures that truly matter.